Hi friends, I'm gonna get ready. Say hey when you're hopping on. Ophir has a big sale going on. Um, like so shop their sets and collections. You can see like what's going on there. Um, and I just love their makeup. I haven't gotten ready in a couple days and I'm excited to get ready. Also the outfit I was gonna wear um, just didn't work out. And so I was like, I am just going for it. I'm going to wear leather, got on some cute little jeans. I'm going to do my makeup. I really want to go get an actual spray tan. Um, all the good things, but how has your week been? Christian's been on spring break. Um, and so we've had that. Uh, the girls had a half day today. I'm like looking for some of my stuff and I, I said I'm doing red lips and now I'm like, where's my red lip? Um, I from Kentucky. Where's everybody else coming in from? There's my red lip. Nope, not it. Crimson. This is the color. If you're looking for like the perfect red, this makes your teeth so white has like blue undertones and that's what we're going to do today. I have freshly washed hair. Um, I got up with Veda. I took the, we have a new puppy. Why? We thought it was good. I did get a puppy while we have a baby. I'm not sure. Um, but we love the new puppy, but you know, they get up a lot. So, um, last night we got up to do the puppy thing. And, um, then the other dog, I guess, thought we were an intruder. And so, started barking like crazy. So, Veda got up, which is the 15-month-old. So, Adam got her a bottle, and then I was feeding her. And she was, like, acting really weird and restless. And uh, then she puked all over me. All down my front, all down my hair, all over the bed, and her whole bottle. And then she was, like, totally fine. Um, so, I guess we overfed her. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything else. And so she, uh, she's good now, but, um, you know when you like feed her, so she takes bottle before bed and then it's so just a couple hours later and we like fed her a whole nother, but you know, like here's a bottle here. We'll get you back to sleep. Mm -mm. No bad news. Okay. I'm going to go in with coriander today because I am not really tan. I really need to exfoliate my neck. Oh, so but I didn't do that. So we're going to make the best of it. So my spray tan shade is cardamom. My not spray tan shade is coriander. I just went in with Ophir's primer. I'm using their dewy primer. Um, they used to have a matte primer, but it's been out of stock for a while. And it was like the best thing I'd ever used in my whole life. And then it went out of stock and I started using the dewy one. And I don't know if I'll go back to the mat. I have loved how my makeup is looking. Okay, so I'm taking this and I am going down my neck. I'm just trying to blend these together. So the girls have a half day. Lexi started track and uh, Lola does soccer. And like yesterday we were at the track. Uh, we were at track at 3.30 is when it started. So we went and took her to that. Then it was over at 4.30, but then Lola had to be at soccer at 5.45. And I'm like, man, this is why people don't have eight kids anymore. If you have eight kids and you're on here, I'm gonna send you a Starbucks gift card because I don't know how you do it. Like, seriously, it is four kids, a lot of kids. And I just, the lady beside me at soccer had eight kids and um, they're all grown now. She was really sweet. She was probably 70 and I don't get out of my house much. So I talked to her most of the soccer game and I was really excited. We exchanged phone numbers. Uh, she gardens and I just really loved her. And so I'm going to take this out of my hair. Um, my hair is definitely wet, but, uh, anyways, I just was like, I cannot imagine eight kids. Um, let's see. Hang on, folks. You have five? I just am like, does it get... You have six? Oh, you guys need a prize? Um, so crazy. So crazy. 
All right, uh, kind of have like a ooh, homemade situation going on. My charger was propped up on my um, setting powder. I'm like, what's the word? Okay. Do you guys ever wear leather? I just feel like there's something about it. I haven't worn leather in so long and I follow this influencer who, um, she wears leather like a lot. And every time I see her in it, it looks so cute. And so they had this whole section of leather jackets on clearance and I bought five leather jackets. So I guess you're going to see me in more leather. They were like $35 each or something. I don't know. But I ended up like when my order actually came in, I was like, Man, I must have really thought, like, leather looks cute on. So, <laughs> do you ever do that? I'm like, well, I was influenced. Your coworker has 10 kids. Oh, so many children. And I love kids. I love my kids. Um, I just am, like, struggling to figure out, maybe it's the season of life I'm in. Um, like, we're working and... Uh, we have kids and stuff in it, but it's like, uh, and I don't want my kids to not do sports. Like I wasn't really allowed to do sports growing up. Like my parents were like too, we're too busy for that. And so I'm like, when I have kids, I want them to be like, whatever they want to do. But I think I just need more sleep because I got puked on in the middle of the night and, uh, and then tomorrow I'll feel better about sports. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. But this is way too much. I can already tell you. I don't. I'm going to blow some of that off. I use the biggest. This is Sundial. It's uh, the darkest um, shade that they have. It is such a wonderful, pretty bronzer. Okay. So if you go right under your uh, cheekbone, this is where it looks. But even if you go a little higher, It'll give you the, like, where you're actually on your cheekbone. Do you see how that, like, raised my cheek up a little bit? So that's where we're going to actually put that. It's, like, a little higher than the shadow. Anyway, so if you're a mom and you have a lot of kids and somebody lately hasn't told you, like, you are doing a good job you have kept them alive for this long or they had clean underwear today and didn't wear bathing suit bottoms or um, you took a shower for yourself or maybe you just have dogs and or maybe you don't have anyone else to take care of but life is just hard. I want to tell you, you're doing a good job. There are so many outside pressures of this world to like do and be all these things and um Sometimes you kind of have to look at it and be like, okay, whew. today I brushed my teeth. Today I just drink water. Today I sat in the sun and let the sun warm me up and I felt alive. Like whatever that looks like for you. Okay, so if you do what I just did and you got too much on your brush, when I say this stuff is pigmented, it really is. So I'm working this in. I knew I got too much as soon as I did it. Barely tap. So when you're like, I get people that message me and they're like, I highlight and contour and I look crazy. You probably look like this. It's because you use too much product. So take your foundation brush and just blur out your edges. And this is going to fix your problem. It happens. It happens to the best of us. I mean, for goodness sakes, I do makeup tutorials for a living. Sometimes I just get to talk in and whoop. Look at the difference just that makes. Not kidding, invest in their, here's what I would invest in, primer, foundation, their bronzer. If that's, if you can't even afford all of that and you're like, well, what could you invest in for just one, their foundation. I would do their foundation and like a stiff brush. Um, but I love the way their foundation looks with their primer. It just like makes it to where it lasts all day. Your pores look tiny. Um, it just has all the good things going on with it. So I I love the foundation and uh, primer together. I'm just taking this. Um, it's just a fluffy brush. Okay. Going in with that bronzer. And I'm going in. 
whenever I'm going to do either a wing or like a red lip, anything bold on my lips, I will go more neutral on my eyes. So today is two of my niece's birthdays. How cool is that? Um, so Adam's niece, her birthday is today and she's 14. And then my sister's baby, is, her birthday's today and she's three. So I'm like, oh, so it's a good day to be alive. That's all I'm doing. I'm not putting it on my lid. Um, I did put foundation on my lid and that's kind of how you get this like little bit of a ombre look. Um, so Adam's tired too. And we must just be like jet lagged from travel because he called and he was like, I got the girls from their half day. And I was like, oh, good. But that's good. I remembered to get the kids. And um, he was like, Lexi has a track meet and so she needs running shoes. Uh, you know, it's like a real thing. I guess they make you faster. And then, uh, he was like, and I'm guessing we'll, we'll need shoes too, because you know, if one sibling gets shoes, the other one, but they, I cleaned out their closet the other day and they literally have two pairs of shoes each that fit. So I was like, we probably need it. And then he was like, then I'm coming home and I'm taking an hour nap. <laughs> um, but she got up earlier than me because he took the, he took them to school. And so, um, I was like, Oh, you need sleep. Sleep. Don't feel guilty. I have spent the majority of my adult life feeling guilty about rest. Feeling like if you rest, you're lazy. Like that's kind of like what I grew up in was like um, people who like take a nap are lazy or if you're resting. Like, but as I've gotten older and as I also realized how have like researched like how important sleep is, it's like it is the fundamental building block for like your brain to recover your body to recover to lose weight like all all the things and so if you feel sleepy and you're like I really just wish I could take a nap like don't feel guilty if you need somebody to give you permission to take a nap today I am giving you permission take a nap take care of yourself Your granddaughters are born on the same day, same year, about two hours apart. What a good, what a good day. I just went in with that same bronzer and like that stiffer brush um, and really chiseled down the edge of my nose. Yeah, if you say me or whatever, it'll send you all the links. I saw people asking about the link thing. Um, if you need a link for products or clothes or whatever just drop the word me below and I can send it to you okay so as we're getting ready I'm going to tell you something that we've been working on for a while and it's about to launch in um April so I um I've done network marketing for uh 10 years and I probably didn't start getting super successful with it until like seven years ago um and but I tried like lots of different things then I switched from just network marketing to affiliate marketing as well. And um, I have had over my career, I don't know, over 10,000 people on my team. I get asked literally daily from people like how to get started in either network marketing or how to be an influencer or all the things. And so we hired uh, a team to help us develop uh, coaching, a coaching series. So if you're on this live, you get to hear about it first. Um, so we hired a team and several other employees to come in and help us like take all my favorite tips and tricks. What I wish I knew in the beginning when I got started, what I, um, uh, what I've learned along the way and have kind of like a beginning influencer course and then like a intermediate, uh, mastermind course for people. So I will, get you guys more information on that as it comes around. Um, but if you have questions about like, I would love to learn how to do this, drop them below. I would love to see what you guys are actually interested in. Um, I think this will be something that barely use this. It is so pigmented. I think this will be something that is really fun. I love, I used to do coaching, um, a lot. I did team trainings like almost daily. Um, and I, 
I have like a background of, I don't know, I don't want to say trauma, but like I but probably, you know, like if literally if I could do this industry, like anyone could, um, like when I originally got started, I was like, if we just don't lose our car, we'd already filed bankruptcy. We'd already like, I was like, I just need enough to like help me pay my car payment. Like that would change my life kind of thing. And, um, I, I don't know. I genuinely love knowing that like, Hey, an extra $250 would change this family or an extra thousand dollars or an extra 5,000 would like get me home to where I'm not like not with my kids, you know, or it could help me put my, my child through school or, or whatever. And so, um, I just felt overwhelmed by how will I manage like as many people that ask us questions. And so Adam and I talked about it and we decided like, well, I think this will be very fulfilling for me to be helping others like learn how to do this and um let's just hire on extra help and do it and so that's what we're doing so <laughs> we need a tv show we have our podcast stuff up we are gonna start doing our podcast um that's like the closest thing we have to a tv show and then when we do these masterminds for coaching um but i would love a tv show if anybody on here who knows anybody in the tv department okay i just put a little bit of this current blush that's what i have on my cheeks um you barely use any on your butt on your brush or else you will end up looking like a clown it is crazy pigmented but i just like barely tap and blow it off and i just warmed up my lower outer corner of my eye just to like no one's gonna be like oh you have purple on but do you see how it just added just a tiny bit of warmth so adam's gonna do a podcast for investments real estate like how to um and invest and things like that um but we're gonna do a one together called a couple of swans and they'll be me and him together and then for coaching um I'll have a podcast just for tips on this industry on social media marketing um and and so that's what we've been working on and uh we're finally at the point where it should it should launch in less than a month so okay we are I'm gonna like fix my brow because I feel like I need a brow fix let's see Got one crazy brow going up. And then I'm going to line my lips. And use crimson liner. Okay, Ophir also has a deal that whenever you spend $150 with them, you can get, um, you spend 150 bucks, you can get a free foundation, a free setting powder, and a free concealer. The code is happy skin for that. I'm just using like a brow wax. So our couple of swans podcast, it's going to be about everything. You guys are going to be the ones that, that direct it of what you want to hear about, but hopefully it'll be about like marriage, co-parenting, fun, dreaming, investments, um, influencing, like, uh, whatever questions y'all have, that's what we want to talk about. And we're going to do it together. Just shaping these brows. Ta-da! Okay, now we're gonna go in with our mascara and then our crimson lip color. It is like if you love Louis Vuitton, like or uh, Christian Louis Vuitton shoes, um, that red, red, uh, such a perfect red. That's what you're gonna get with the color crimson. 
It is so good. All right, we're gonna go in with mascara. How much weight have I lost? So I have lost 100 pounds. Um, but I've kind of been at a plateau. My body loves to be about 180 pounds. <laughs> that is just like my adult body, like happy place, I guess. Um, so I am like 177, I think when I weighed this morning, 178, it's either 178.7 or 177.8. I don't know. One of the two, somewhere like that. And so, um, I've lost 100 pounds, but I've really been either at a plateau or like maintaining for the past couple months, like since around Christmas. Um, but we started going, like doing keto four days ago. Um, still going to keep doing like my regular Modere stuff I've been taking. Uh, if I continue to feel like I hit a plateau, I might talk to my doctor um, about like, hey, what can I do for like insulin resistance or something? Like I am doing all the things, but before I do any sort of thing like that, I thought I need to like actually buckle down diet wise. And so that's what I'm currently doing. So I'm on day four. Um, so I feel like your first three to four days of dieting are like kind of the hardest. I literally, ugh would have eaten a half sucked on cookie from beta. Like that's how much I wanted sugar. But today I woke up and I felt much better. What's my goal? Okay, so when I got, um, like after I had Christian, I had got up to like 220 when I was pregnant with him. And then I got back down. I used to be about 130. That was my like pre-baby weight, but I was also young. I had Christian when I was 19. So every time I would get up to like, you know, again, like 90 to hundred pounds. And then I would get back down to like that 130. I have not seen 130 since I had Lola. She's eight. And I have not been lower than 165 since I had her. Something happened with my body after I had my third baby. And it's just like, I mean, I have tried it all. I... Uh, when she was a little, I mean like weight loss pills, like, uh, it dieting, serving myself, like only eating practically green beans. Like, I don't know all of it. And so then, um, when I got pregnant with beta, she's like 15 months now. Um, I was already like 180 when I got pregnant with her. So now I'm back to my technically pre-pregnancy weight, but I don't think my goal will be, I mean, I would love, like, I don't even know if I would recognize my body if I weighed 130 pounds. Um, but like probably one, uh, 65 to 150, I think I would be like so stoked. Um, but even now I'm, I am really excited that I've gotten to like my pre-pregnancy weight. Um, and when I met Adam, I weighed 180, like, he's never seen me skinny. <laughs> so he likes me like this. So that's nice. And I have learned to like myself like this. Um, there are days that I think are like harder than others, but for the most part, I'm like really having a heart of gratitude and trying to have a heart of gratitude about like, you know, my body, like what it does for me, like that it's made all these children and keeps me alive. And like, um, you know, I just, buying new underwear and new bras that fit, I think that uh, is also pivotal. My underwear was like hanging off my body. Like I just kind of felt eh in everything. And so I got, like not too long ago, I got started buying clothes that actually fit my new post Veda body. And that has made a huge difference that it's like, hey, well, it's not necessarily, you know, your body just shifts and changes and your hips spread and my belly's like a little saggier and like all these things. And so, um, oh, I knew I was going to do that. Ah, I hate when you like hit something. So I think more than like the number on a scale is like how my clothes fit. And then also like how I feel and then not trying to like 
something just doesn't fit the way my body is, like I'm having a sip and shop in a couple weeks at my house for like friends and I'm getting rid of, I mean, I have so many clothes that don't fit. And so, and so many clothes from like brands and all the things. And I'm like, I just want to make room for the things that I do love and be able to see what I do love in my closet. So I'm planning on getting rid of like at least 70% of my wardrobe. Um, and only keeping the pieces that make me feel like I look fire in this outfit. Like if it doesn't make me feel that way, then I'm not keeping it, you know? Um, and I'm planning to use the money that I'm selling from the clothes and I'm like, nah, I've worn this once in three years or something, you know, or I haven't worn it. I don't even like the way it fits on me. Like, so I'm going to take that and then I'll reinvest into a good wardrobe. So that's my, that's what I'm doing. Um, okay. So we're going in with crimson so for reference I so I'm like 177 178 I'm five foot four and um I wear like a 14 or a 15 in clothes so um and then like a large or an extra large in tops So I have crimson liner and crimson lipstick. I like to be honest about um, what size I am because I used to Google people's weight and I would be like, holy cow, or I'd follow certain people and I would be like, she's so beautiful or whatever. And then I would find out like, wow, like she weighs more than I, like, I think there's this culture in our mind of like beauty associated to a size. And so even at 250 or 270, I was totally fine with like telling somebody, hey, this is what I weigh because I want you to see like there's such a stigma and people don't talk about what they weigh or their size. And I'm like, I want you to see that like we all are different sizes at different times, you know? Yeah, so I wear Ebby bras and panties for like comfort and then for like sexy underwear or sexy bras. Um, I actually went to Victoria's Secret two days ago and I got actual bras that fit my body. Um, so I have kind of been living in just Ebby bras. They're super comfortable, but they're like high, high up and like they're like a t-shirt bra. And I was like, I need something that like if I wear a top, which I don't have any bra on right now. Um, but, uh, if I wear like a, you know, something that's low cut that it can like help me out. So ashamed of your weight you won't tell anybody oh you don't have to be at all you don't have to be ashamed of your weight like and there's a good chance somebody that you know that you feel like is beautiful weighs the same amount you do like i love following ashley graham i don't know if you guys follow her uh i don't know exactly what she weighs but i know i think she's absolutely stunning and beautiful uh she was a victoria's secret model but she's just like a like curvy, you know, girl, but start following people. If you do struggle with like your body image, start, I would start following people who inspire you to like, um, that when you look at their images, you're like, oh my gosh, she's stunning. And like retrain your mind of what your view of beauty is as well. Because if all you ever see is like a certain thing and that's never obtainable for you to be, you know, it's like, Got to retrain your brain. It's really hard to do lip liner and talk at the same time. Okay, now we're gonna go in with the lipstick.
how cute is this crimson color? I wish my hair was done, but it, it will be done at some point. I'm gonna stand up and show you. Pretend I have, just pretend my hair is supposed to look like this. It kind of looks edgy. I mean, I feel like I'm liking it. This is my edgy mom look. This would be a great date night look as well. I used to be so nervous to wear red lips. Um, I actually didn't. I would say it wasn't until a few years ago I ever even wore red lipstick. Um, I just felt like when I saw it on other people, I'd be like, wow, like she's confident or that looks amazing with her outfit or like, I wish I could do that. And then at some point I was like, why can I not? Like, why can I not wear red lips and somebody else is allowed to wear red lips? Or what if I'm just doing it for myself? Like, I don't care if it, um, isn't necessarily for somebody else, but just for myself, I want to be like, yes, I feel like confident and beautiful today. So if you haven't worn a red lip lately, why? Just wear your red lip. Wear the red lip. Shove yourself into your leather. Um, I lost a button uh, getting it out of my suitcase, so I gotta sew that back on. Um, but y'all, always wear the red lipstick. So if you have questions about anything, you can always message me. I feel like I need something a little darker under my uh, lash line, so I'm gonna look for that and then I'm done. I'm done. Actually, we could do a devotion together. Do y'all wanna do a devotion? I didn't think I had my book up here because I moved it, but I do have it so we could do it together. Love the leather jacket. It's on clearance. It's fantastic. The button falling off was my problem. I like got it hung on my zipper on my suitcase. I also have an embarrassing story. We went to Canada last weekend and there was a Zara there and it was fantastic. And um, it was so cute. Adam was like, okay, you do your thing. And he was gonna go check out like this train station and look at it or whatever. I was like, okay, you have fun. I'm gonna go in Zara. So I went in and then I was like, I'm gonna try on this. It was similar to this. It was like a corset um, top. I just think that they are so sexy and so cute. And so I uh, got myself into it and I'm gonna order the same corset online. But as I go to try and like, it was in the back. The zipper was, which is always bad news. Zipper was in the back and I'm trying to get myself out of this corset. <laughs> and I realized I'm never going to get out of this. I'm at this point sweating profusely and I am like trying not to tear this outfit and I am stuck and it isn't because I, it was too small. I zipped up a tag, I guess because I was trying to zip behind my back. And so I had to go out and I was like, hey, like, do you work here? And the girl's like, no, I don't work here. And I was like, do you know, like, well, she spoke French. And so I was like, uh, do you know anyone who works here? And she's like, mm. like, we obviously didn't understand each other. So then I found someone who works there. And so she couldn't get it off either. They had to cut me out of the shirt. I was mortified. They cut me out of it. And I just like had to kind of like hold myself and go take it off. And I was like, I'll pay for it. Like, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize I zipped up a zipper. And they're like, no, that happens. Like, don't worry about it. But they had to cut me out of it. They could not get the, even after cutting the tag and everything. I was so embarrassed. But anyways, I do need to look online. I forgot to look for, I was out of there. I didn't end up buying anything. I was like sweating and so embarrassed. I literally was like, nothing worked for me. And I left. And then when I saw Adam, he was like, are you okay? Like, you're like red. And I was like, got stuck in a shirt. They had to cut me out of it. And he was like, all in this 30 minutes? And I was like, yes. And so embarrassed. Anyways, embarrassing things happen to us all, right? Okay, here we go. <sighs> Can you imagine? That happened to me at TJ Maxx once too. Uh, I had, I was a nursing Christian at the time and I must have just been bigger than I thought I was. And I got so stuck and my boobs were dripping and I was stuck in the shirt from like here with my arms up and I had to go get a helper that worked there to like help me get out of it but I was so mortified because my boobs were leaking everywhere and I was sweating 
and linking and I was stuck and it was because I was too big for it. Like in a totally different scenario. Um, but I just kept laughing uh, and my armpits were hairy and I felt so embarrassed, it, but I didn't even know this person, but those were the things. Anyways, the purpose pathway in advance, part three, for we are Christ's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. Purpose is such a powerful force. Discovering one's purpose is more re about realignment than about achievement or attainment of something new. In the last two entries, we explored the purpose clues found in the phrases of workmanship or good works from the passages above. Our next purpose clue in advance. So often we're looking outside ourselves for clues about what we are supposed to do, who we're supposed to be. This is a flawed start to the purpose discovery. We are Christ's workmanship created in his image and his purpose. Our identity is found in the pre-made design. It's not about our passion, what we choose to do. It's about permission, surrendering to what we were born to do. You've already been prepared in advance for your destiny. You have everything you need. Sure, we all need to refine and stewardship, but God's unique blueprint for your life was pre deposited in you before you were born and when we allow Christ in our lives that decision supernaturally activates it. Take a moment to think about how you've always enjoyed helping others. Does it have a major event? What stirs your heart? What everyday impact do you want to have on others? How has God pre-built you to elevate others? What an amazing passage to like think on. Think of how you have enjoyed helping others. What stirs your heart? What everyday impact do you want to have on others? How has God pre-built you to elevate others? It's really not even about yourself. How has God pre-made you of, of serving others and what stirs your heart in helping others? Um, anyways, Lord, I'm so grateful that nothing in my life takes you by surprise. Thank you for equipping me in advance to be a catalyst for impact. Give me your eyes to see specific qualities and gifts you've already given me to fulfill my life's mission. I am ready. So, if you struggle with your purpose, um, not I, I have forever. I've been like, God, I just feel like I want to do big things. I want to have a nonprofit for um, women who have children and they've been in abuse situations and they don't have anywhere to go. That is like a huge heart of mine. I feel like many people um, stay in bad relationships because they don't have a way out. Um, or if they leave, how will they get on their feet or how will they feel like they could support themselves? Um, and I, uh, we, we every month or every other month we will like take food to, um, it's like a hope house here in our town and for women who, um, they live there temporarily until they can get on their feet, but they get to live there with their kids. And I think that's also another, like there are a lot of safe places in our country or in our area for women, but a lot of times you don't get to have your kids with you or, um, like what can keep you and your kids out of like a shelter, or maybe you just need like three months to get on your feet, you know, kind of thing. And so, um, that is something that Adam and I have talked about for years. Um, and I'm hoping that like, if, to be honest, I'm hoping that if our coaching business ends up going really good, that's what I would love to do is invest into that. That's like, uh, we, um, have our own like lives kind of like, um, I, I do my job. He does his like, you know, whatever. But like, when you think of like, God, I want to do like big dream things. Like I want to like, um, provide like for paying people's mortgages who have cancer or who can't take care of themselves or I want like if you see a need you're able to help with a need like we would love to have a nonprofit to like help genuinely make an impact in people's lives and um but it's all like baby steps you know and that still has yet to happen and some days I'm like god I just don't even know like I don't even feel like I have a purpose um and then my kids sometimes will feel the same way too they're like I just want to know what my purpose for my life is. And I think that like, if you can find the little things throughout the day, like today, my purpose, I'm going to go out of my way to make someone else feel better, whether it has anything to do. Um, and with, you know, 
any anybody else. And so um, just like, what am I going to do to help make a difference in somebody else's life? Uh, we have so many things that we're using the camp for, like, um, hopefully like, uh, like church retreats or marriage retreats, or somebody reached out to us recently, um, to see if they could rent it out for, um, people who just need like recovery. Like they've gone through like losing their children and there's like a group who like a support group and like, can they come and like use the property for that? And we really believe like God, like open doors to be able to let that property, like, help heal people and help like impact others. But, um, but we, oh, that should open really soon as well. But we've had a lot of irons in the fire the last few years, but, um, but yeah, so if you're struggling with that, uh, going to put that out there. You were in an abusive relationship and you made it. You had a child and she's grown now. Oh, thank you for sharing. Uh, and you found a husband and I found like, I have a, you know, I was a single mom for a while and, um, and it is scary to like, to leave relationships. Um, it is so scary to not know how you're going to take care of your kids. It is so, but I will say that every time that I've been like, God, I do not understand. Like I was talking about it today with my babysitter who's helping with beta right now. And I was like, when the kids were younger, like we had picnic parties because I sold our couch and our dining room table because I didn't have money to feed us or to pay our bills. And I was like, we had picnic parties and I would lay out like my grandma's old quilt on the, on the ground and we didn't have any living room furniture and, um, or like dining room, which didn't have furniture. And so we'd make picnic parties and we would have pancakes and eventually like Christian was like, mom, I'm so tired of pancake parties. And I was like, I know, like, but I could feed them for a long time on pancakes, you know, cause it was inexpensive and you just mix it with water and there you go. And so, um, but it's like just being able to, like, it is scary to not know how you'll take care of your family when you leave a situation. And, um, I don't know. That's what my, my heart is just, I've been praying lately, like, God, how can I make this? Like, and maybe at some point we'll even just start a nonprofit and fundraise for it. Um, and I don't know, but that's, that is like our goal of what. Who are you? Hi, Lola J. Mm -hmm. Hi. Did you have a good day? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mommy. Did you get new shoes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love you. Mommy. All right, you guys. What? I love you too. All right, folks, I'm going to hop off here. Um, and, mm, uh, so pretty. oh, thank you, Lily. You're so pretty. All these, whoa, <laughs> drop it like it's hot. Lexi, what are you doing? All right, folks, can you tell everybody to have a good day? Have a good have day. A good day. Right, and lunch. And lunch. Have a good lunch. That's what we're going to have. We're going to go have a good lunch. Bye. Have a good lunch. Bye. Bye. Bye.